Hi, today we're going to make and install an electronic circuit for manually controlling the idle speed on an engine, in this case a small block Chevy engine. The IEC valve, the idle air control valve, is a little step motor that in this case is down there, just next to the intake. And I've put a little connector on there, so it has four wires going to it. This is a four wire step motor. And I'm going to switch out to that control. This is the normal control. I've got uh, male female connectors so we can easily get to it and change the connections. Um, so what I'm going to do is have a switch over so that we can either have the IAC valve, the idle air control valve, control from the ECU like before, or switch to an alternative position. I'm going to make and install an electronic circuit with a little rocker switch that we press and it'll make the idle speed go up or the idle speed go down uh, when you press the button. So the reasons for doing this uh, could be manifold. In my case I want to have manual control over the idle speed because occasionally when it's driven from the ECU it sticks in the open position and the idle speed is too high. Uh, you uh, might have a problem with perhaps the engine stalling when it's cold and you want the fast idle to be increased somewhat. Uh, or maybe the idle speed is fluctuating up and down and you suspect the ECU is doing that and you just want to have a simple manual control over it. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. So what do we need to do this job? Actually it's not too complicated. Don't get put off by this wiring diagram here that I've just knocked up. Actually all it involves is doing some basic wiring between pre-assembled circuit boards. You can get very very cheaply from uh, eBay and the like. So this is a step motor driver board, this is a pulse generator board, a regulator generating 5 volts, uh, the right sort of toggle switch. So this will be a switch that we have inside the car and companion with another little toggle switch. So we'll use this to switch between automatic and manual mode, up and down. Once it's in manual mode, see this is a sort of temporary make type two-way, two-pole switch. Um, so we'll have Press it up for the idle speed to go up and then down for the idle speed to go down and when we release it the uh, step motor will stay in the position that it's in. And so we don't need to get involved with uh, too much um, uh, component soldering and wiring up. Most of the soldering is done on these boards which come reassembled as I say. And all of these parts, so these switches, uh, these two boards uh, are less than £10, UK pounds on eBay. So about $15 or something, US dollars. And this is how you wire them up. Uh, I'll go over explaining that if you're not too familiar with uh, wiring diagrams. So this switch is a two-pole, two-way switch. So this central part here switches either to that side or that side, depending on how it's pressed. And that independently does the same. So what is represented uh, on the diagram is this this arrangement here. These are the two poles, the switch between these two dots and we'll use that to both power up the circuit and to determine the direction that the step motor is going to drive in. Uh, so what I've tried to do is minimize the number of wires that we're going to have in between the switches that are inside the car and where we position these little boards which will probably be in the engine bay somewhere. Uh, so I've drawn a line down here to indicate uh, the inside car bit and in the engine bay bit and we could have four wires possibly even three wires you see down here one two three four uh, the reason I say three because this wire is ground and we could have a separate ground inside the car compared to in the engine bay very little uh, voltage difference across the uh, ground so that's a possibility if you didn't want to have uh, too many wires uh, so what have we got so we've got the switch or two switches, that one there, that one there. We've got this regulator that generates 5 volts. It's only a little 3-pin 7805 type of regulator. Actually, this one is slightly different, being a LM2940-5 volt, which is this part here. A couple of little capacitors, which are these little things. Again, you can get those on eBay. Uh, the pulse generator based on the NE555 chip is this little board, a couple of pounds. And just that for frequency and that just just the uh, speed at which the step motor steps. Uh, this is a little step motor driver um, board including 
the DRV8825 stepper motor IC. Uh, drives up to two and a half amps, up to I think uh, ooh, 45 volts or something. I think so. 12 volts will be fine. A uh, couple of wiring indications to show how you wire up the board, and the names of each pin are shown underneath. So that's not too hard. Um, not essential, but I've used a relay. This is a four-pole two-way relay. Just happened to have this in my scrap box. But in the video description, you'll see some links for where to buy these uh, extra things on eBay or the like as well. Uh, this re represents the four poles, one, two, three, four, each one switching two ways. And this is the actual uh, coil to the relay, driven from the switch. So you flick the switch and the relay will then switch the idle step motor connections either to the original ECU, it's for automatic control, or when it switches the other way, it'll switch over to our manual control over the uh, engine idle speed. A few connections to make, uh, not too difficult, so let's get on and solder those up. Oh, the other thing you might want perhaps is a little bit of uh, shrink wrap material. When you're wiring up these relays, there's quite a lot of connections here, so it'd be an idea to um, wire up or solder up each wire and then slip over a bit of um, insulating uh, shrink wrap, which is this stuff. Uh, you could use some insulating tape, I suppose, if you're careful as well. Up to you. Uh, you could alternatively completely do away with the relay and just have it manually controlled all of the time as well, which makes things uh, perhaps a little bit easier. Oh, and the other thing we need is to find uh, these wiggly things here are resistors. So I need some 10 kilo ohm resistors, two of them. So I'll just grab those from my scrap box and then we'll start wiring up. So here's our 10 kilo ohm resistors. Add those to the pile. Uh, the other thing is quite useful, uh, not essential again. Uh, this is a PC uh, power supply connector. So four wires, you have male and female types. Uh, I thought that was quite useful so you can easily uh, connect into the existing wiring. Uh, you saw one of these earlier in the engine bay. One more thing is quite nice to have when you're connecting your circuit to the 12 volts, which is the car battery. I should always put it through a fused supply. So this is an inline fuse. Again, these are readily available from uh, component suppliers. And inside is a three amp fuse. Okay, here it is all wired up. I uh, found a little box to put it in. Um, so what I used was a little box from a light socket. Just use anything. Quite handy that, because they're quite heat tolerant. There's the relay with the heat shrink insulation on all the uh, connections. Quite essential to do that because the connections are so close as you can see. Uh, so in the car we'll have this rocker switch and this little toggle switch. So that'll go switching for auto or manual. And then once we're in manual mode we'll have one press for making the idle speed go up and then release to stop until you're happy. And then down, press it down for the idle speed to go down. Um, so I've really got three wires that go from switches over to the electronic circuits. Just use a bit of um, household mains wiring for that. And just two other wires that can go to a local um, 12 volt um, connecting to the car's ignition system. So it only comes on when the car is running and a ground connection. And at this end we we'll have another ground connection. And these are the two connectors that connect on to the step motor. That one goes onto the step motor, this one goes onto the original ECU. And so let's just delve into uh, having a look at the circuits all wired up in here. So not particularly pretty, but functional. <laughs> so a lot of wires all jammed in. There's a bit of a squeeze in this small box. So what we'll just do is try and Get these wires out of the way. Hang on a minute. So here's our step motor driver board. Uh, again, with the heat shrink insulation on those connections. Supports the wires and stops them from shorting out. The 100 microfarad capacitor just directly mounted onto the pins. And here is the timer board. Uh, it might need a little bit of adjustment with the jumpers to change the speed of the pulses coming out of this board. Uh, also, um, perhaps particularly pretty looking but uh, fairly easy and convenient to do but the voltage regulator uh, onto the uh, pins there's only three pins on this one power ground and out 
and the two capacitors, the small 100 nanofarad capacitors underneath, go between ground and out and ground and the power in. There's the 10k resistors, insulated off again. Uh, just going to make sure you don't get any shorts between these pins. But it's fairly well mounted onto the board, so there should be a minimal risk. So if you want to make it a bit neater, you uh, perhaps could have a separate bigger board and mount these boards on the separate bigger board. We need a bit more space. So uh, it doesn't look particularly pretty, wires going everywhere, but hopefully that is functional. So um, now we'll plug it all in and test it out. So I'll leave it out of the box for the moment and we'll go and connect the power, connect it to the stepper motor and see what results we get. Okay. All right, here we go. Got it temporarily wired up. Wires to the stuff motor. Here's the circuit. And press the, oh, first of all, to test whether the uh, manual auto switch is working. Should see the relay activate. So you switch it. Which, yep, yeah, you can see just about see the relay going up and down there. So that's fine. And then we'd we'll leave it in the auto mode which means our step motor circuit is not actually connected and doing anything but it will still power up when we press the rocker switch so we press that and hopefully yep we should see the light flashing here this pot on the board controls the frequency at which it flashes so we'll wind that up a little bit probably want something like 10 a second to start with this control will take it all the way up to 50 hertz or 50 a second. So on each flash of the LED, that is one pulse going to the step motor driver board. And I think we just need to make a little bit of adjustment to the duty cycle pot as well, which does interact with the frequency control as well. And as you can see, as the duty cycle supposedly is going up, it's also increasing the frequency. I think something like that sort of rate of flashing should be good enough. That's probably 10 or 20 hertz, I would imagine. Don't know how accurately you can see that because it's probably yeah, it's beating um, with the uh, video frequency. But actually, that's flashing at about 10 or 20 uh, hertz or so. So, to tell the truth, I did have a problem with uh, one of these boards, so it wasn't quite as easy as I first made out. Actually, the direction input seemed to have blown up. So I had to get a new board, wire a new board up, and actually I took the precaution of putting on some extra protection components into the circuit. So this direction input comes from this switch here. Because it's quite a long wire and goes to where it's intended to go, to the inside of the car, I think it was possible that it picked up a uh, static discharge and actually blew up the direction input. So just to give it an extra bit of protection of 100 ohms and 100 nanofarad capacitor, into the circuit, we should give some protection to this direction input. And with the new board, it all seems to be working correctly now. And if you want to see what the waveforms uh, that go to the step motor look like in what's called mode zero for that step motor drive chip, then we can look at it on the oscilloscope. So I've upped the frequency on the pulse generator board, but on the, the little jumper switch on the third jumper setting, so it's much higher frequency, too high frequency for the step motor, but easier to see on the oscilloscope. And if we set off working in one direction, see so the bottom waveform goes high when the top waveform is already high, one way, and then the other way, see the bottom waveform goes low when the top waveform is already high, showing that the two directions are now working. So the only thing that's important in terms of wiring the driver chip outputs up to the step motor are that the B output drives one coil and the A output drives another coil. So one and two A to that, one and two B to the other. In terms of the polarity of the one and the two, it doesn't actually matter too much um, in the mode zero for that chip. Um, one way around, the motor will go one way, the other way around, the motor will go the other way. A little heat sink that they supply uh, with this board isn't necessary at all. In, in fact, it creates a bit of a hazard because they uh, recommend just sticking it on top of the chip. 
Uh, whereas uh, what happens is it's very easy to rotate and you can end up shorting that and connecting to the uh, connections around the board which may have been how uh, the direction input got blown up. So next we'll start the car and see if our manual control over the idle speed actually works. So now with the engine running if we press the up button on our switch you can hear the engine idle speed increasing Press the down button on our switch. You can hear the engine idle speed going back down again. Which shows that our controller is working. So all we've got to do now is tidy it up. I've already boxed it away. Wrapped it a bit of insulation. Won't get too hot inside. It's only a uh, temporary operating circuit. And uh, we'll just um, tape up these cables, put them somewhere neat, and that's it, job done. Alright, so here we have the switches fully installed in the car with our auto or manual selection. And now in manual mode, we can easily control the idle. Press up, stop, the idle stays where it is, press down, the idle gradually comes back down and anywhere in between. Let's see how high we can go. Probably all the way up to about 2,000. There we go, 2,000 revs. And down again. And I've just marked up the positions with auto and manual mode. So auto of course is the ECU. Manual is just this switch. More information and the latest circuit diagram. I just put together a nine page document showing that circuit diagram, the circuit diagram of the boards, the board connection uh, pinning, uh, some data sheet information, how those boards are typically used, pinning for the regulator, uh, the board connections for the pulse generator, and um, the sort of components that you will need for this project that you will find on eBay. So um, basically this is the document showing um, all of those bits that you'll need. Uh, right down to those PC connection cables and bits of um, shrink wrap insulation sleeving. See the description section of this YouTube video. Sometimes it's revealed by pressing on the little down arrow. Uh, gives you information on where to get this document and some other useful bind links. And that's it. That gives me a lot more control over the idle speed. Sometimes it uh, could be a bit erratic or a bit uh, sticky on high idle. So um, it's nice to have the flexibility to control it yourself. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.